It's like a gargoyle frog bug thing. Oh. Pick your, your, in your pants? It's like if Ronald McDonald was an SCP or something. What is that? And uh, he's, I'm loving this. I'm he's, loving this. He's, uh, he's not real. Hello, one and all, all you freedom spreaders, all you democracy spreaders, throw your hands in the air because I see you. We stand in solidarity. <laughs> Helldivers, yeah. Well, we're not here to talk fully about Helldivers. I'm still on a kick. Sorry. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> welcome to Story Dive, who eventually also may help spread democracy. No promises, but we'll try. Yes, uh, I, uh, I will join the cause at some point in the future uh, when my schedule allows um, me. Yeah, freedom spreading is pending. But in the meantime, this is Story Dive, the, the show where we dive into all things storytelling, trying to understand them, and spreading storytelling democracy throughout the world. It's the true, truest of true causes. I'm your host, Kai. I'm joined <laughs> here by the sub hostess with the mostest sub logan yeah they call me that because i have two sub sandwiches you don't know where they are two it could be anywhere <laughs> that's kind of concerning just floating <laughs> subs somewhere in the universe they could be anywhere check your desk oh. pick your your in your pants what is that a sub no we don't want to go there um skipping through that I uh I'll look for some subs later. I I forgot where I put them to be honest. Okay. Well, also then that sub sub eating is pending. But in the meantime, we have some spooky stuff to talk about today. Spooky. Logan. Some very spooky stuff. What makes it spooky? Spooky. It's and not even spooky. It's it's April. Like what are we It's not Halloween. It's not Halloween, but as the world clearly knows, April is the supernatural month where that's where all the aliens come and oh, fetch, all right. the abductions happen in April. Oh, it's scientifically proven. Well, uh, I gotta, you know, put on my anti abduction underwear tomorrow then. Thanks for reminding me. Yes, do you can, you can take it from me, a very trustable, very wise source in regards to, uh, aliens and all of those, Creatures of the night. We're talking about cryptids today. Oh, Specifically yeah. cryptids, not necessarily aliens. We're talking about the weird, the funky. Like the Bigfoot and big, and big Hand? Creepy. Big big Hand. Is there a Big Hand? <laughs> I actually have no idea. I kind of hope there's not. That's a really, really weird image in my mind. It's, it's like Master Hand from Smash. You see a... <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Big hand. You see a big foot, and you're like, oh, it's a foot. But a big hand? Like, that thing can move. I guess yeah. a big foot can move as well. We're not really going to cover Bigfoot in particular, because we got some weird ones. The cryptid world is the wacky world of strange concoctions of creatures of all different shapes and sizes. It's going to get weird. We're talking about a full-on cryptid conundrum. I don't know. You can put a trumpet in there. I can't do it justice. <laughs> I'm thinking of some kind of creepy <laughs> noise for cryptid conundrum. Yeah, it honestly sounded like you were like celebrating a little bit. Like it was like a game. Yeah, show. I don't want it to be. Like, <laughs> Welcome to the cryptid Welcome game show. The conundrum. How do you want to <laughs> die today? What's behind door uh, number three? You know, it's. Uh, uh, Whoever, <laughs> uh, a siren head. I don't know. I, I, well, I, I don't know too many cryptids, but we'll see. Maybe I know more than I think. Is siren head a cryptid or is it more of a an SCP? I don't know. I, to me, I thought they were the same thing. So maybe you can maybe you, you can explain that to me because uh, I to me a cryptid is just like a creature that may or may not exist. That's really creepy. Uh, I feel like it's like the most general uh, definition of my brain. Okay. Uh, we will get into that. But before that, do you have a story? 
Oh man. Um we have a quick little segment about stories. I should have a story. Let me just think here for a sec. Um what has been going on this week? I don't know. Uh what Did is you like it? squish a bug? Did I squish a bug? I actually haven't. I feel like you know, where we live out here in Utah, there's not a lot of bugs. Um growing up. What are you talking about? There are so well, many bugs. I don't, I don't see them. Okay, actually there was an ant in the bathroom like two days ago when I was at work. That is like the first <laughs> bug I've seen in a long time. Um, oh, I can tell a story. Wait, you just, you just jogged my memory. Um, so uh, I was in the bathroom um, as one does at work and I was in the stall and I was like texting and this guy comes in and he's so like, not working. <laughs> Well, I was at work. I wasn't working in the bathroom. I was at work in the stall doing my thing. Let the record show for all people <laughs> who work where he works. He was not working. It was in the bathroom. Well, I, was, I was on the clock. Just wanted the record to show. But I had to use the on bathroom. On the clock even? Well, I, oh, man. If Double offense. You can use the bathroom on the clock. Everybody knows this, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, continue. I'm just having fun. I, I was texting, and this guy comes in. And he's like breathing heavy, like <sighs> whatever. And I'm like, oh, dude, what's going on? And he like, you know, I can tell he's like stepping up to the urinal. And dude, what happened after that, like, was crazy. Like, I swear, I closed my eyes and it literally sounded like someone had turned on the shower. Like, like they were going to shower. Uh, you, you know, the noise, like someone's taking a shower and you can hear it through the door. Um, yeah, but like you can tell, Wait, like there, there's a specific noise of when someone's taking a shower. There's like a specific, like water trickle noise that's like constant. And this man, I don't know how, but when he was peeing, it was straight up shower consistency for like three minutes, and the breathing did not stop the whole time. He's and I just it was crazy, bro. I was just like, this is not actually happening. Um, this man really had to go, but yeah, I was very impressed. And then he left the bathroom. And after that, I saw an ant and that that's my story. This is the ant story. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what reminded me of it. You're like, I'm like, have you squashed any bugs lately? And it, you know, you reminded me of when I saw the ant, which was right after that happened. So. What a, what an experience. Maybe, maybe, he came, maybe he came in and he didn't actually pee at all. He came in and was like going through a metamorphosis where all of his bodily fluids were just shooting out of him. And he eventually evaporated into a tiny little ant. And that was him. Dude, is this a cryptid? Maybe he is. So you've heard of, you've heard of Bigfoot and Big Hand, but, but you've you got you, Big Wiz over here. Have you heard of Krant, the little ant that that what used to be a human you know and if he if he crawls into your shoe then you know you're you'll be the next crant like you have a week to oh, that's actually before you horrifying evaporate in the bathroom i don't know i mean that's what okay so let's get it like i that's my story of the week but i i'm genuinely excited to get into this topic because that was a great segue uh, and I, I want to know what is Honestly, the difference? What is the difference between so, uh, like Slender Man and an actual cryptid, cryptid? You know, like I don't know. Okay, so a cryptid. Okay, I, I'll give the definitions between cryptid and uh, and Freddy uh, bear and SCP. So the SCP Foundation is something stands for a secure, contain, and protect. So, or like area 51 SCPs are kind of just stuff. kind of objects, entities, and phenomena that are classified as something that you need to that shouldn't enter society in a normal fashion, right? If that makes sense. Like they're they're dangerous for whatever reason. Yeah, very, very dangerous for whatever reason. Um, that's kind of getting into more of like a horror niche genre style thing. Yeah, the, like, yeah, I know what you mean. I think Slenderman and Bigfoot. Uh, no, no, Bigfoot and Slenderman are not the same thing. <laughs> what do you mean? You, Those you, are 
you find them out in the woods and nobody's ever lived to tell the tale you know it's like that's the same what but that's just a thing about bigfoot is a lot of people claim to have lived to tell the tale no but the people who actually meet bigfoot don't make it back that's what i'm saying everyone who has said it they're lying because they made well, it they're back. lying gotcha because they, they made it back it's like they, well, their, their friend I guess. their friend died but they made it out but they never got to see him because uh, okay you know what i <laughs> I'm, Wait, I'm just making yeah, stuff I, up. I'm hitting oh. a struggle because <laughs> have people died to Bigfoot? I guess I've never. No, heard I, I guess of, not. Like, but it's like I think he's commonly regarded as dangerous from my perspective, at least. Um, but I, I guess it's more so that nobody has ever seen Bigfoot. Like nobody's been able to prove it. There's just like those like weird pictures of like high like drone pictures of like the woods and it's like a black and white image of something that looks like it could be Bigfoot um, and people like camping out in trailers and stuff. But uh, yeah, I guess Bigfoot isn't yeah. known for okay. his hostility, uh, but we're getting off topic. Uh, <laughs> we're talking about Bigfoot again. Bigfoot is a cryptid, but it's yes. not the cryptid. We could spend episodes talking. And I'm sure there are podcasts about, Specifically, oh, Bigfoot. I actually There's know no doubt that there are podcasts about Bigfoot, um, like specifically him. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, take it. So, we're not here to talk about Bigfoot. No more big. I don't want to hear another Bigfoot <laughs> noise for the he, rest of this. He's, he's train the ride. poster child for cryptids, though. I feel like, like everybody knows Bigfoot. Yeah, well, let him be the poster child, and let us talk about anything else okay all right so yeah what's, what's <laughs> sorry the, what, i'm getting super overly what's the dramatic difference? what's the difference i so i need to know this a cryptid is an animal that cryptozoologists which it might be a profession really question mark i don't want to like defame someone's profession but it is what they're called cryptozoologists believe may exist somewhere in the wild but whose present existence is disputed or unsubstantiated by science. So there's no mm. way to prove that these animals exist, but there's just claims, claims that they do exist and stuff like that. That's why uh, a certain ape of large foot size who should not be named and things like Loch Ness Monster, it's just a claim that people have said that they exist, yeah. but there's not any kind and... of scientific serious proof Okay. To unequivocally prove that they exist. I see. So it's it's kind of just like you know, like monsters that have not been proven to be real, but like there's like so many myths and rumors around them existing from other people. Um because there is like this horror element to it where it's like scary. Like uh there's a game on Steam called Rake that I remember playing one time. And that game had, I think, all the the cryptids you'd think of. Like, it had Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and um, it had some others like uh, like Rake. Um, which, I don't even know Rake's whole story, but that game was very scary. Because you were out, out in a trailer and you'd go out in the middle of the night to try and get pictures of them. And it, they, it, that game was really good at jump scaring. Um, and those monsters were all hostile. Which, again, we don't know their true nature. Um, but it seems like they're all animals, and that's where it differs from SCP. SCP can kind of be anything, um, like any kind of yeah, experimental yeah. human or monster, robot, like just like a uh, like a concept, like a, sh a living shadow or whatever. Um, you know, Siren Head, Slender Man. Yeah. These aren't like animals. These are like monsters, or you know, the Boogeyman isn't a cryptid. I guess he's just like he'd be more of an SCP. Um, but, yeah, yeah, but it seems like SCPs are kind well, of cryptids, but cryptids aren't like SCPs. Like it's like kind of, it's it. yeah, yeah, yep. But okay, so yeah. So yeah what's the what's so, the plan for today then? What's our okay? We're getting into the cryptid conundrum. Okay. Uh, shoot lightning, spire, 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 lightning and fire through my fingertips. Oh. Cryptid conundrum. Um, so I have here a list of 
cryptids that most likely you've never heard of in any way, shape, or form. So I'm going to give you, I have, I have pictures and videos. This was going to kind of be interesting. It's different from a bit of our other stuff. Okay. Um, you, you can, uh, honestly, you can look up a lot of these cryptids yourself for whoever's listening for our sweet, sweet train passengers here. You can look up a lot of this for yourself. There's videos and evidences of all these things, but we're going to get into it. So I'm going to show you a picture and I need you to guess what it is. So you get a point for guessing what kind of it is. If you get even within like the right realm of what it's named, I will give you the point because it's some of these are like, what? And then uh, I need you to guess if it's like, I'll, I'll go into a short history of what it is. And then yeah. I'll need you to guess if it's real, if it's sorry, not if it's, if you think it's real or if it's already been um, discovered, classified a hoax or like it's been scientifically proven. Oh, so it's no okay. longer a cryptid. It's just a real thing. I see. And you get a point if it's one or the other. Technically, I will accept also a third answer of we don't know yet. Okay. I guess. So first, I have to guess what it is and see if I'm accurate enough. And then I have to guess if it's already been found or proven to be fake. Yes. And then is there a third thing? The third option, if it's found or proven to be fake or we don't know yet. Okay. Um. So is that two points per round? Yeah, we're it'd be two points per round. Here. Yes, it's a, to a certain unnamed game that was actually really fun of a an episode that you're just going to have to watch all of ours <laughs> to figure out which one it was. Oh, darn. Oh. Um, I, because uh, I, I, I got inspired uh, to do my thing off of something you did, I think, so... Um, Oh, nice. I, I think we're so like, we're, you'll have to go watch whichever one that is. Yeah, that is. Our, yeah. our, our games are evolving over time. So, okay. Um, I just, if you have, if you have, uh, how many do I have here? One, two, three, 14 points total. If you get seven out of the 14 points, you'll win. I don't know what you'll win, but you'll win. Okay. Um, I guess you'll, I'm still trying to figure out what you want to win. You'll you can decide next time and, and unveil what I have won or lost in the next episode. Okay. Okay. You, you still have to come up with a topic for it. me for next week. It's so. true. Okay, but I have to admit on record that almost feels like a win for you because then you don't have to do any work. No, 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 no. That's not true. That's not true. Um, I still have to because. I maybe you're uh taking too much pressure on with this because like you have the ability to make me do research and prepare an episode for anything, even something that I know nothing oh. about. Because usually I stick to things I'm comfortable with or I'm interested in, but you could literally make me have to talk about like Barbie movies or something. You know what I mean? Like you're you're thinking about this way oh, too. Oh, I am holding so much more power <laughs> than I thought I did. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying is like. This isn't supposed to be a punishment for you. Like you don't have to prepare anything. You just have to come up with the idea. Um, so, I feel so much power. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that'll that'll so be interesting. Power. Make sure to tune in next week for that. Um, but let's get into this game, Kai. Let's let, give me, give me a cryptid. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to dive. in. I am sending you the first picture. Oh, that was a really small image. Hold on. <laughs> so maybe, maybe a better, here's a better one. Oh, okay, cool. And our cool. Discord chat is gonna be weird. Oh man. Uh this is should I describe it? What uh like do you want me to uh, go honestly, ahead and make we my can guesses? Put a picture up for the... Yeah, I can put pictures up in the episode for anybody watching. Um uh yeah. But try, just describe it. Describe it and give it a name. So It could be, some of these, I will say, some of these have, like, specific names, and some of them have kind of, like, a species This is name. a, it's a freaky-looking fish guy, but he's got, like, a horn, like a unicorn. He's got, like, a big nose. 
but it's like really creepy. Like the, the creepy thing about this guy is his face for sure. The rest of him actually looks kind of endearing. Like he's a, he's like a dugong or a, um, like he, he honestly looks kind of majestic and then you get to his face and it's like straight out of a horror movie. It's like a, like a horse mixed with like Gru from Despicable Me and he's got giant bloodshot eyeballs. Like it's really not pretty to look at. Um, so what would I call this guy? I'm going to call him, uh, I'm going to call him the, the leather unicorn from the deep and leather unicorn. That's unsettling. That, that's <laughs> leather what it looks like. Okay. You know, now I think about this name's not going to be, it's not going to be real. So if I'm like, there's no way that's the actual name. That's just what came to my mind. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it though. Cause, uh, that's all I can think of. What else am I, what else am I trying to decipher here? We've got. Okay. So I'm going to go. So this is the first part. Right. In regards to if you got the name right or not, I will not answer that yet. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I was going to answer it, but then it would spoil something. So uh, I'll, I'll give a basic description of what this thing is. So it's. Uh, a really bulky animal that usually grew to about 26 to 30 feet. What? That's so uh, That is terrifying. Yeah, it was, it was huge. Thick layer of outer skin, and um, it's kind of a what's considered part... It's like theorized that it's part like mammal monkey, part oh. uh, fish. Man, it's kind of like a freaky, weird mermaid. Well, thing. he doesn't have limbs. He just has like these big floppy fins. So, like, does he go on land at all? So, That's crazy. Uh, it's not determined. But I want you to tell me: Is this thing real? Is this thing a hoax, or is it undetermined? This is a total hoax. That is my answer. Dang. <laughs> okay. You're sticking to your guns there? Yeah. I, I'm sticking with my gut. This this thing ain't it ain't real. They've they've determined it. It's official. It's Fake official. News. Fake news. A fish. Is it something old. official? <laughs> it's a, <laughs> if you know you our know. Own channel. If you know, you know. Uh so this thing is real. It is real. No way. Like officially real? It w yes, it is officially oh, real. Man. Or at least should I say it was real. What do you mean? So what does that mean? Um, it was a currently extinct. Uh so this is why I'm gonna give you I will give you a point on the name. What? Uh, Wait, no, there's no shot. <laughs> no. Well I'll tell you I'll tell you why I give you a point. So Please. Um, this, this thing, the, it's actually called Stellar's Sea Cow. That's what it was called. Stellar's Sea Cow. Um. Oh, gross. So the Stellar's Sea Cow, um, the reason I give you the name is it's related to manatees and dugongs, which is like, I know you're referring to a Pokemon, but you actually oh. named what this thing was close to. Yeah, it like, looked like a dugong. Yeah. Actually, truly. You know, like yeah. Plessy. So because you... Any of those guys. Yeah. Like, so because you actually bought on, like, said exactly what kind of species it is, I'll give you the name. But it is real. It lived... It was a prehistoric uh, creature. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I'm glad. But for a long time, <laughs> people were seeing around. it and thinking... Yeah, people weren't sure what to even explain what it was. They thought it was a giant sea monster thing, and it, it kind of was, but it did go extinct. It was essentially a giant thirty foot tall manatee. Like, dude, again, as, again, it's it's fine, other than the head. The head is just <laughs> the most horrifying thing on the planet. Um, like, please, yeah, it's, go away. 
It's freaking weird. So, so anyway, I'll give you a point for oh, the name. I, I'll take it. I but... will take it. Okay, so... And then you did not get the point, though, because it, it was a real thing. Dang. Yeah, I was... I just really wanted it to not exist. I I wanted so bad this thing to just never have been real. It's that I don't think terrifying. it looked quite like that. I really truly don't think it looked exactly the way that it's illustrated here. It's a lot closer to a manatee looking thing. Man. Okay, okay. here All we right. go. Here's round two here. I'm ready. Um sending the image now. Whoa, dude, it's an anteater werewolf. Dude, this is sick. <laughs> this guy looks awesome. Something out of an uh, altered beast or something. This is this is a cool guy. Yeah. So to describe, for all you audio listeners out there, this guy, imagine like a ripped werewolf. He's just like what you think of when you think of a werewolf. But then he has, his head looks kind of like an anteater but the end of his nose has a spike on it. And then his legs are like the goat looking legs where they have the backwards uh, calf thing, you know, I don't know how to describe that with the hoof at the end. So he's uh, like, the spike thing is in fact a tongue. That, that's a tongue. Not a spike. Oh, that is a tongue. It looks like a spike. Um, so it is like, it's an anteater with a werewolf, it's an ear head, werewolf torso, like goat person legs. Um, a very cool looking creature honestly uh like this would be a sick kind of monster or boss to fight in like any medieval game or anything um i don't know what to call him though he'd be like cause this guy he's uh, he's an he used to be an ant eater right but he's evolved into the freaking man eater because he's a he's a freaking man so it's a man eater <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna say that this guy is the man the man eater, because he, he he's evolved from ants. Man eater. He doesn't eat ants anymore. Okay, honestly, I wish. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not gonna say anything yet. Um, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> the man eater. Okay. Now, uh, is it real? Is it fake? Is do we not know yet? This guy is way too cool to be real, so I'm gonna say he's fake. He's way too cool to be a, a real thing. This is something okay, I'd see in an anime. Yeah, this is something I'd see out of an anime. That's interesting. Okay. Or like Narnia. Um, it's like saying our centaur's real. It's like, I wish. You know? Do you? Those things could trample you easy. I just think mythical races are cool. I'm not saying that like, I wish centaurs were real for like my enjoyment. You know? Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fair. But it would, okay. it would just make so life give more you... interesting. You know, like, make I, minotaurs are I suppose sick. it would. I love minotaurs, bro. Make them real. They're so cool. Okay, but if you saw a minotaur in real life, dude, I'd, I'd lose my mind. I'd, I'd go limp. Dude, I I'd would be too. sad. I'd lose my mind and ask for an autograph, bro. <laughs> As it's brutalizing the nearest wall or person, you're just like, can you sign this in blood? <laughs> He's like, sure thing, dude. And he does like his, his <laughs> yeah. snort, you know, like sure thing, dude. He just stops everything. He's like, "Oh yeah, anything for you, <laughs> biggest fan." <laughs> you get a selfie with a minotaur, and then he continues with bludgeoning. Can you sign my nose to ring? Him. Can you sign my battle axe? <laughs> I want to be just like you when I grow yeah. up. <laughs> dude, I I'm just biased. Cause, what would uh, it take to grow up as a minotaur? I don't know. Ever since I was a kid, I, I've loved minotaurs because I, I used to play Gauntlet Legends and. Uh, the Minotaur dude, Gauntlet, was that's a so good game. Sick, dude. You could be a Minotaur, and I just so sick, bro. Anyways, anyways, we're let's get back. So we're okay, about... so um, this creature is called a Capilobo. So you didn't get the name right, Dang, Capilobo. but the Capilobo is a vampiric creature from Brazilian myth. Mm. Uh, so you were right in that it's not true; it's a myth. Um, okay let's go but i have to be honest it's like i kind of want to give you a half point because man eater is such a good <laughs> that's such a good name like it's a really really good name for something like this uh hey man you're the judge 
You know, I'll take a I'll take a one point five points. Okay, I'll give you a one point five point Ooh, for that one. Okay. <laughs> That's just such a good name for it. But yeah, it's a it's a vampire creature. Dude, that's it, sick. like so according to this, it would uh it can stun people with its foul stink, and even those who survive the encounter will get headaches and dizziness for several days to a month. Yeah. It's known for its shrill screams, which can be heard for ten miles and are powerful enough to even to bring miles. even the hardiest of hunters to their knees. That's awesome. This guy is sick. Okay. I am a huge fan. <laughs> Not as much as Minotaurs, but he's up there for sure. Same energy. He's up there. Dang. The Sounds man like he, eater. He needs to take a shower so before I meet him. Sounds like. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Otherwise, you're, that'll be it. Yeah. You'll be that one guy that no one will ever <laughs> see again. <laughs> yeah. Don't think about the karaoke. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh, okay. gosh, no. Well, so this guy is bulletproof, it says. He's bulletproof. Oh, man, how cool, the only cool way... can get? Dude, this guy's got all the features, bro. Next, you're going to tell me he's got, the only like, way to... a, 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 he makes six figures and he, like, lives in a penthouse or something. <laughs> it's actually, like, filthy rich. It's right. not filth. It's just filthy riches. Yeah, his riches are filthy, um, and he owns all of them. Ew. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. So sorry. I'm also reading about more of this. They can only be killed by a blow to the eye or to the navel. Dude, uh, you see how small his eye is? This guy's never gonna die. Yeah. Yeah. That's that would be really difficult to do. <laughs> uh, some accounts even claim that it must be done with a spear. Oh, I don't know how that. That's man. very mythical to me because, like, yeah, like the I don't whole, know the whole wooden stakes. To kill a, a vampire, like it sounds very cryptic. Yeah, dude. Not to. Okay, this is where it gets intended. like very interesting. Uh, Capilobo do not actively hunt humans. Um, they like dogs, cats, and goats. However, if they can manage to capture a human, they will grab them tightly and suck their brains out through the top of their skull. Oh, like a like a coconut, like a. Like a yeah, mac. like a coconut. Like a craft Ever a easy mac. Bro. What's that image in their heads? Like a like, the, <laughs> like a bag of spaghetti at 3 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. It's like a bag of spaghetti at 3 a.m. Okay. So uh, I you got half a point for that one, and then yeah. you did correct to guess it was it was a hoax so you need you got two and a half points right now. more dude this is the easy peasy guy <laughs> you keep giving me pity points i feel like no no well but we you guessed one right up well okay we'll see where the where the points fall <laughs> okay. at the very end it's it's gonna as we go along it's going to get a bit more like okay freaky All and right. weird okay it, yeah that guy i i'm actually a fan of that guy so I'm sure that the next one is going to be something really gross. Uh, I tried to stick out of gross because I don't like gross, but oh, okay, you know, uh, that's fair. There's a hey, I I'm fine with no gross. Uh, there's a no, no okay. A no Here's gross zone. He, the no gross zone. We're on the no gross track of the train ride. Yeah, uh, we don't take gross here. Get it off that train. Get it out of here. Yeah. No gross here. Yeah, anyway. So here's the next guy. 0.9% of germs are not allowed here. Dude, is the last 0.1% of germs technically encrypted? Because we yeah, don't know if it exists or not. It was this guy, the Anna Lobo or whatever. He doesn't shower. <laughs> this, this, so. this thing is the final germ that yeah, you just he, can't get rid of. He's got, he's got the last percentage of germs on him. That's why it kills everybody. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Well, okay, here's here's the next one. Here we go. You ready? Okay. Ka chow. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Um these images are great, by the way. This guy looks like a very angry alien. Um so it's like imagine Gollum from Lord of the Rings mixed with like a generic looking alien. Um he's very pale, angry eyes, no mouth, no anything really, just skin. 
um like he has arms and legs obviously but like no hair no belly button no facial facial features just eyes um kind of like the head honestly is kind of like a like a marvel superhero kind of vibe from the picture at least but I don't know what to call this guy. Oh, is that another picture? Oh, this one's a lot creepier. Yeah, here you go. Oh man. Okay, this one looks like it could have a mouth, and he has like more wrinkles. Definitely looks more uh, dangerous. I mean, the first one looked dangerous in like a cartoony way. This one looks dangerous. Like I've already looked into Ghost Rider's eyes, and my soul is leaving. Like that. That kind of vibe. Um. Gosh dang, dude. He has like the same texture as the rocks behind him, too. So it, he could have a rough surface. Like his his the top of his skull looks straight up like a craggy rock. Um what what do I call this guy, dude? I want to call him something like Fred, but that's like not that's not gonna be what his name is. Um <laughs> just yeah. something like, oh, if Fred's gonna get you, you know. You know, Jim's coming Watch out. You. Take your meds, or it's either the meds or Fred's. The meds or it's the Fred's. You get to pick. I'm taking the meds. Um. Okay. What? How about <laughs> the meds, baby? The meds. <laughs> Have what? you seen that meme? Which one? <laughs> of like, it's the one where Kingpin from uh from yeah. Spider Man. Oh. The, car, uh, the he's like, you know, it's all about Spider Man. It's about the Mets, and he like puts on a Mets hat for like baseball, and he's like, "Yeah, it's about the Mets, baby, the Mets. Let's go." I don't think I've seen that one. No, no, it's no. pretty good. It does seem pr- it's pretty fitting for this moment, though. It's all about the Meds. Um, it's all about the Meds, baby. Because you, you don't want Fred. Um, let's see. No, you don't want the Fred. Let's call him like, because you know, Skinwalkers are a thing, which apparently I'm not supposed to say Skinwalker, but this wouldn't be a Skinwalker. That it would. What would this be? It would be, it's an alien. Is this Rake? This could be Rake. You didn't say anything about Rake earlier, so maybe you're trying to hide it. Hmm. I think Rake has a mouth, though. So let's call this guy... Uh, dude, these names are hard, right? Like, how am I supposed to... Let's see, like, other cryptid names. We have Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot... Um, the last guy kind of had more of a scientific name. The first one, I forget the first one's name. Um, oh, it was like, uh, the sea cow. So that was like something that already exists. So this could be, let's call him like the pale, the pale watcher. That's my final answer. (laughs) Pale Watcher. He's the Pale Watcher. Okay. And, um... Okay. So, bef- I was going to go into it, but the more I describe it, the more answers you would get. So, do you think this is a hoax, or a mi- uh who, or we don't know yet? Uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> Expound. Explain, um, elaborate. To be completely honest, well, number one, right? You gave me two images. One looks very realistic. One looks like it could be fake, right? Because it was like drawn like a cartoon or a comic strip, I should say. It's more detailed than a cartoon, but it's like you gave me two sources that could mean it's real or not. Um, and also, if I'm being completely honest, it's it's just the one we haven't done yet. So if I'm thinking about this from a meta terms. Uh, it's the option you haven't done yet, so I feel like it's more likely. Okay, interesting. Oops, I just opened the program. Uh, okay. Um, well, to answer the, your your things, you do get one point. Uh, we don't know yet. Yeah. Okay, I was pretty sure about that. Um. But okay, uh, but that was. Honestly, pure coincidence that I just happened to do one that existed. What it, it ain't gonna be that easy from here on out. Listen, it may not have been on purpose, but that's how people. That's how it works, you know. Like people's brains Dang. work a certain way. Uh, he's inside my head. What, what do I do? <laughs> you, uh, you <laughs> I don't know what to do. The meds, not the Freds. Remember? 
It's the meds, baby. <laughs> it's the meds. Um. Okay. So yeah, but I want to know more about this guy. What's his name? Okay. So this is the Dover Demon. Dover. That's what he's called. Dover. D o v e r. Dover Demon. Okay. Alliteration. I see. Yeah, the Dover Demon. Dover, as in um, um, Dover. What's Dover? Is that a place? Um, it's a small humanoid reported from Dover, Massachusetts. So, yeah, I the Dover see. Demon. Yeah. Okay. Um, dude, this guy. So is I'm gonna demon. read you the sighting. Holy crap! There are two sightings here. Uh. Yeah. Okay, so here's the first sighting. Remember, this is Dover, Massachusetts. So, like, I'm pretty sure it's quite foresty. I mean, that's how it's depicted in here. It's, like, in the woods. That kind of thing. But here's... Yeah. here's Okay. The bizarre tale begins at 10.32 p.m. on April 21st as three 17-year-olds, Bill Bartlett, Mike Mazoka, oh, and Andy names? Brody, are driving uh -oh. north on Farm Street. Yeah, so this is this is reported like to police, right, right, right. And, so and, like, so yeah, they're in that category of like people have talked about them, but nobody has ever seen it or like been able to actually, like, yeah, yeah, exactly, its exactly. Existence. Yeah, okay. Which is exactly where crypto uh, should be, right? Like, yeah, that's what makes a, a cryptid is yeah, it can't be substantiated, but um. Uh, I'm going to get back to the story now. Sure. Uh, Bartlett, who's behind the wheel of the Volkswagen, spots something creeping along a low wall of loose stones on the left side of the road. At first, he thinks the creature is a dog or a cat until his headlights shine on, and he realizes it's nothing he's ever seen before. The figure slowly turns its head, and head, not heads, singular head, yeah, there's only one and head stares here. into the light. Yeah, it's it's two large, round, glassy, lidless eyes shining brightly like two orange marbles. Its watermelon-shaped head resting at the top of a thin neck is the size of the rest of its body. Except for its sized head, the creature is thin with long, spindly arms and legs and large hands and feet. The skin is hairless and peach-colored and appears to have a rough texture, like wet sandpaper. Bartlett subsequently tells cryptozoologist Lauren Colbin, ah, standing no more than three and a half to four feet tall, the figure is shaped like a baby's body with long arms and legs. It has been marked with, it had been making its way along the wall, its long fingers curling around the rocks. When the car lights surprised it, unfortunately, neither of Bartlett's companions sees the creature. The sighting only lasts a few seconds. And before Bartlett can speak, the car leaves the scene. Then the creature is gone. Bartlett drops his friends off and goes to Walpole Wal Wal Street home. What the heck? Visibly upset, he walks through the door and his father asks him what's wrong. Bartlett relates the story later and sketches what he's seen. Oh man, so they, they saw him, but nothing happened. Yeah, it didn't. It seems like it didn't attack anyone. I have another account okay, here, okay. but just kind of reading it out. Well, see, this is where, uh, this is where it gets uh, interesting. It's because, like, if it's just one guy seeing something, it's like, oh, yeah, whatever. But then, like, if another person says they saw it, like, on a different day, like, that's where it's like, uh oh, the, like, this thing might actually be real. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Around midnight. 15-year-old John Baxter leaves his girlfriend. Kat Way to go, John, for having a girlfriend <laughs> at 15. Well, not anymore. Uh, Kathy, <laughs> not, I guess. not for much longer, know. bro. He, he left his leaves girlfriend, his girlfriend Kathy Cronin. Bro. Oh, my oh, no. Gosh. He just left her house. Not he didn't just Permanently, leave. dude. He's not making it back. There's no way this story is going to end with him alive. Or maybe... uh, okay. Well, let's... Yeah, well, you gotta keep myself. reading, dude. He's like, how, okay. how, how do we? He know leaves about his it? girlfriend Kathy Cronin's house. Yeah, truly, unless Kathy talks about. It. Anyway, at the south of Miller High Road, uh, then Baxter started walking up the street on his way home. Half an hour later, after he has walked about a mile, he observes someone approaching him. Because the figure is short, 
Baxter assumes it's an acquaintance of his, M.G. Bouchard, who lives on the street. Mm. I guess M.G. Bouchard is a really short person. Question mark. Do we know what time? Don calls out is? and is this? Oh, are these people still alive? Like through like age? Nineteen seventy-seven. Oh, okay. So, so the first sighting was April twenty-first. 1977 and the last sighting is april 22nd 1977 so a day later oh, also man. in dover massachusetts okay so all the people that are that reported this are like pretty old now if they're still alive that is yeah they would yeah baxter assumes it's an acquaintance of his mg bouchard john calls out and no response baxter and the figure continue to approach each other until finally the latter stops Baxter then halts and, as well and asks, who is that? The sky is dark and overcast, and he can only see a shadowy form. Trying to get a better look, Baxter takes one step forward, and the figure scurries off to the left, running down a shallow wooded gully and up the opposite bank. As the figure runs, Baxter hears his footsteps on dry leaves. He follows the figure down the slope. Dude, why would you follow it? Yeah. That's such a dumb idea. <laughs> yeah, like in the middle of the That's night, I would silly. not... I'd be out. I'd be like, I'm going to bed. Yeah. There he sees the creature standing in silhouette about 30 feet away. Its feet molded around the top of the rock several feet from a tree. The creature's body reminds Baxter's of a monkey. Except for its dark figure eight shaped head. Its eyes, two lighter spots in the middle of the head, are looking straight at Baxter, who after a few minutes begins to feel uneasy. Realizing he's never seen such a creature before and fearing what it might do next, he backs carefully up the slope, his heart panting, panting, pounding. He then walks very fast down the road to the in intersection at Farm Street. There are a couple of passing in a car, pick him up and drive him home. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it's like the, the, these encounters are like they, they, have, they like stare each other in the eyes and then they part ways. Like, um, there's no like it's not like he got like scratched up like it, it's like he ran and like tried to tried to run from him and then he jumped on him and scratched his arm and it's like you know what i mean like there's nothing to, to even like consolidate that this thing had any meaningful impact on him other than like oh scary monkey that looks like he's made of wet cement you know yeah yeah but, so anyway, gosh, damn that's, it. That's, this is, that this is a thing. cool creature. This is a cool, you know, Dover Demon's an easy name to remember. Uh, and he's like, essentially, imagine if a monkey was like covered in like cement, like, and but his eyes are like fire, like so it's like his eyes are just like glowing orange. Um. Very, very, very much demonic. It's like a demonic monkey gargoyle that lives in the forest. Like, cool creature, for sure. I would love to... I would love to see... Like, you know, like, these are all creatures that would be cool in, like, video games or in mythical or fictional, um, like, books or something, you know? Yeah, seriously. Okay. Except for that um, first one. Screw that first one, dude. He's freaking ugly. Yeah, that extinct <laughs> dugong. We're just going to... Uh, these other not real ones, we're going to invite them into our life, but the, the poor extinct one, you're just going to murder mercilessly. I'm not going to murder him. I'm just going to... I'm just going to be sad. <laughs> it's tearing away. He ain't getting no movie nights. Yeah, I'm just going to close my eyes when I'm around. <laughs> that sounds so mean. Okay. This one, you're going to need to... Uh, so I'm here. I'm sending it to you now. Oh man, we have a just video. Don't, it's got some dumb uh piano music, so just turn the turn the sound off. Okay. Um. Okay, so we have a it's a camera footage like Five Nights at Freddy's esque. There's something walking in the background. It looks like a pair of pants with no torso. What is this? It just keeps going. This straight up, you know what this looks like? <laughs> you know what this looks like? It's like the, from Fantasia, it's the, it's one of the brooms. You know what I mean? Like. 
<laughs> one of the brooms, huh? Yeah, you know the brooms that like Mickey Mouse puts on the wizard hat when Yin Sid's gone and he's commanding all of the brooms to clean up for him and take the buckets out. That's what this looks like. It's like a old camera <laughs> footage of one of those brooms walking through what looks like maybe a, a like a park or a ba a basketball court or something. Um that's what this looks like. It just looks like a walking pair of pants. Or it could be fan, you know, fancy pants from Fancy Pants Adventures. Uh, it could just be his pair of pants come to life. It's got the very it's got a similar shape. I don't what is this, dude? This is I'm gonna call this ghost legs. Ghost legs. Oh, you sent another picture. Oh, snap. Okay. Hold on, this changes things. <laughs> Hold on. It's like, <laughs> wait, this changes things. So this picture is like, it's like Groot, but Groot's like weird cousin that he doesn't talk about because he's like weird. Um, It's, oh, th there's more? Oh, dude, what is this? It's uh, the second sighting of this creature. Oh, man. I wonder if we would be able to even play these, but um, dude, I I'll, I'll tell everyone the name later, and they can. Search wait, there's it. two of them in this image. In this in this video, there's two of them walking down the road, like they're just having a good old time. But the image, so the image looks like wood, right? Like the picture you sent, it straight up looks like like Groot. It's a tree thing with two long. So that and image is, I will say the image is what, it's like a uh, depiction of this creature. It's not like actually what the creature looks like. But dude, there's, what people think this creature looks like. These sightings are not real at all. They It totally looks like someone CGI'd like uh, some kind of a really low poly, low designed model. in. whereas the picture looks very... So wait, wait, oh wait, wait. So sorry, I missed what you were saying a second ago. Um, were you saying that like this image is not the creature? So the the image is a depiction of the creature made oh, with wood. Okay, okay. So that makes it make up way more sense. Where it's not like a tree being. Um, it's like someone made a tree sculpture, like a wooden sculpture, to look like him. Okay, that so I think I'm gonna stick with my first answer then and call them ghost legs. Okay, and you're saying it's a hoax? Mm, I think that the videos are a hoax. Um, I'm gonna say that this guy is real. Um, hmm. I I think he's undetermined. That's that's my thing. Is that there's stories of this guy? They have not found him. So okay. I think, I think, the, videos, your, I think your... the videos are fake. 100%. Yeah, that's my final answer. Okay. Uh, so you, okay. I had my processors were not, my brain processes weren't capturing what the heck you were saying for just a second. I almost had a short circuit. Okay. So to answer your question, these are not the ghost legs. That's not their name, but it is a good name. I do like that name. Um, <laughs> not as much as I liked Man Eater, but I do like that name. <laughs> uh, so these are called the Fresno Nightcrawler. Um, mm, Fresno. I, they're all both in Fresno, California. Locations. Yeah. Um, well, at least this one is. So they there have all... been. The videos were at night only. Um, so that does make sense. They'd be called Nightcrawler. Yeah, they are relatively short creatures, 1.5 meters tall. Uh, most of their height is being made up of legs and possess an extremely small upper body. Um, yeah, so it's, it's essentially just some sort of alien creature-looking thing. Um, some people believe that it could be an alien, an extraterrestrial. Some th people think it's like a strange primate species with like 
no arms. Not really sure what it is. You said it's undetermined. It is actually a full-on hoax. It is ah. totally, completely fake. Um, Dang. some of the sightings are actually a pair of white pants being puppeteered, therefore a hoax. Okay, um, I see. So, like, these were like fabricated videos, um, to get people to believe it's real. Because, like, that's what yeah, I, I thought uh, it was maybe CGI, but that makes sense. Yeah, uh, there's actually a guy who like full on recreated this experience in broad daylight um, with funny. a melon, like <laughs> using a melon as like to hold things. And he just kind of tied the pair of pants to the melon and was able to kind of get it to walk in the same way. So it, it's a complete hoax, totally not real, um, kind of creepy if it would be. Yeah, like the wooden picture we, makes it feel like it could be real. Um uh-huh. Without that, I probably would have said it's fake. So honestly, like that that picture of the sculpture um did a lot for its myth factor, you know. Gotcha. Well, you did say the videos were a hoax, so I will give you a half point for that one. Oh, uh, let's go, dude. So wait, I'm at four points then, right? You have four points, and I will say we've got two more. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so it's, we it's gotta... coming down to the wire, dude. These names are hard. It's coming down to the wire. Like, gosh dang, bro. Um, These okay. names are pretty hard. I got this. I got this. Um, okay, so next one. I'm ready. Freaking okay. the, pant, the, the midnight pants. The midnight <laughs> pants, man. The midnight pants. Here we go. These, this is just one depiction of it. Oh, man. What is this? like a gargoyle frog bug thing like what the heck so it's yeah it definitely has like oh yeah, here's ooh, another one. this looks like it's out of morrowind or uh freaking elder not elder scrolls uh souls it's like a bloodborne enemy like this looks like oof. definitely doesn't look friendly so the if i'm trying to come up with similarities between these pictures here uh it's got wings okay this last one just looks like a fly creature like so it's like a bug it's it looks like a bug humanoid that very much looks not friendly so it's got big wings sometimes depicted as like almost a cape um a really nasty bug looking head that could look like a fly or whatever else and then it's kind of well, so one of the pictures have has fur and the other two have like skin. Well, actually the middle one has fur and skin. Um but like, you know, oh, it just looks gross. It's a, it's a bug monster man. <laughs> it's essentially what it is. Yeah. Uh I Okay, let's see here. So, what should we call this guy? Mothman. We call him Mothman. I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna hit me with any of the ones that like people actually say. Um, but he does look like a Mothman. Let's call him. I mean, what else do I call him other than like Mothman? He's Roadie Bug guys. What's another bug I could use? Maybe stick to your stick to your gut. Okay, I think this is Mothman. And I'm going to say that it's undetermined whether or not it's real. Okay. Um, you are correct. It is Mothman. Yeah, let's go. You did kind of coax me. But I, I, I do think I, I, I really didn't have any other names coming to mind. So Mothman. It yeah, is. It's, it's a giant moth person. I, I actually had never heard of Mothman before this, but it seems... Because I've talked to other people. I was talking to Sally, my wife, preparing for this. Um, and she was also like, oh, yeah, Mothman. I know Mothman. I, I just had to be like, wait, you do? Well, How I'll, many people know Mothman? I'll be honest. I don't know where I know Mothman from. Like, I actually, because there's there's the movie The Fly, where, like, the guy turns into a fly. And then there's, like, yeah, other, that was freaky. There's, like other mad scientist movies where, like, they get bug heads or whatever. But, like, I don't know where I know Mothman from maybe, maybe like a, like a Markiplier scary games. 
<laughs> YouTube video or something. I don't know. I don't know where I've seen Mothman before, but I do know of him. So, um, this fit the criteria. Yeah, apparently, he's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Is he? I guess there, I think there is a Yu-Gi-Oh card That's of Mothman. Kind of cool. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, there's nothing likable um, about this guy, really. Um, uh, I will say it's a uh, killer gross. moth from the Batman, like the Batman villain, is based off of Mothman. Or I, it's not confirmed that it's based off of Mothman, but it's most likely very much. Uh, oh my gosh, the Yu-Gi-Oh card looks like very, inspiration for it. Looks very cute compared to the other the other pictures. Um, yeah, so Mothman was in West Virginia is one of its sightings in 1966. Oh, wow. Um, West Virginia. Yeah, it's supposed, supposedly had chased a bunch of miners and or veterans. It chased? Uh, okay. Uh, Roger and Linda Scarberry were driving in Roger's black 57 Chevy Bel Air. Ooh. Fancy oh, man, yeah, and fancy. Steve and with Steve and Mary Millette through the area around midnight, when Linda, the first lady, noticed unbelievably two large glowing red eyes in the darkness beside the old North power plant and screamed. They soon learned that these eyes belonged to something that looked frankly human, about seven feet tall with wings folded against its back. Roger stalled in the road for a minute, inspecting the strange creature. The four realized immediately that their spectacle was no ordinary bird. The true horror began, however, when the creature spread its wings and pursued them down Highway 62 to the Point Pleasant City limits at a speeds exceeding 100 miles an hour. Wow. That is uh, very scary for something like that to be moving that fast. It, uh, they eventually decided that they saw nothing more than a bird and kind of Tried to drive towards the TNT area, which is just somewhere in the state. They wanted to it wasn't long up. before they saw the creature up. again. It's on again. Apparently waiting. Yeah. Apparently waiting on them beside Route 62. The couple has now realized their stalker was no bird. But in the instant that the car's headlights landed on the creature, it lifted vertically in the air with tremendous speed and disappeared above the tree line. Gosh dang, man. Oh, man. Well, it's so creepy, dude freaking creatures that are like so anonymous and like stay in the shadows this creature would be seen throughout the next 13 moins the first oh my gosh i can't even word i'm so creeped out by this the next 13 (laughs) months in point pleasant and it was estimated that there were over 100 sightings at this time wow a hundred yeah over a hundred sightings dude there's no way (laughs) <laughs> there's no way man i feel like the first five were real and then the rest of them were like oh i gotta jump on this mothman bandwagon oh i saw him yesterday yeah <laughs> i was in the burger yeah. king drive through and there were some red lights going on over there yeah i don't know um that's crazy late night at, at the late night with the king and then i saw see some mothman and then i saw some pants moving on their own dude this place is crazy um <laughs> so yeah it's it's apparently just a giant man creature looking thing with big red eyes and potentially yeah. very freaky flies over 100 miles an hour 10 to 15 foot wingspan about yeah, seven feet tall I, I don't i don't like him um i prefer him over uh the first one but i also don't like I think the first one wouldn't harm me. He's just ugly. Whereas this guy would actually like murder me in my sleep. And I don't like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. so this one has, thankfully for all of our convenience, been considered a hoax. Okay. Um, it's, it's considered a hoax. Yeah, it's a hoax. Okay. So, so there's, there's so far, uh, there is nothing that can substantiate an actual attack based on a weird flying creature and all photos that have been taken of this, all sightings of it, any kind of photos have been confirmed to be photoshopped in some way or mistaken. Just like if you use common zooming technology, you could be able to see, Oh, that's just a piece of metal or something like that. So there's literally no evidence to back it up. Um, 
Yeah, there is no evidence. Though there is a convention. Oh. The Mothman Festival. What? It's an annual commemoration <laughs> of the visit of the cryptid known oh, as Mothman. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So I, I got a point for the name, but not for the the other part. Um, so does that mean I yes, have five points? Yes. So. Oh, dude, I, that means I have to get both in the next one. Well, so we originally started with uh, six. Or we had originally started with seven, but uh, for the interest of time, I'll just do one more. And this okay. one will be for all the for all the biscuits. Oh so you only gosh, need to get okay. one of the two right. Wait, really? I thought I needed to get seven points. Or it's just half. So since we lowered it to six, I only need six points now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that tracks. Okay. Um, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. So one more point to go. And I still I still don't know what I'm gonna win. So I'm actually I'm excited to find out next week if I do win what it's gonna be. Um yeah, I or what I lose, or what you lose. I, I'm, okay, I'm, this I'm one's gonna, gonna be really interesting. Gonna it's gonna throw you off. All right, you ready? I'm this ready might be this the thing. creepiest one, oh, honestly. Man. Okay. Oh boy, it's just a creepy looking man staring into my eyes. He's got slick back hair, like a mob boss. He looks very happy about whatever's happening. He's got a checker collared shirt so it's like a white and black checkerboard collared shirt with a black you know pattern tie and the suit so he just looks like a psycho mob boss like i are there any other pictures to go off of or is this it let me <laughs> like what one second i thought cryptids were animals wait this goes against everything we're starting to get into the SCP, dude. This this is straight up just like if uh, this is like if Ronald McDonald was an SCP or something, or a, a cryptid. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's way creepier. But again, very much a human. Um, he's got the swirly eyes and a smile that looks like it's almost stitched together from the way the draw the draw the drawing depicts it. Um. Very creepy, very creepy, but it's just a guy. Um, that's why this is confusing. Oh, we got comic book style. I don't know what the heck that is. What is, what is that, dude? Is that like a is that a spaceship or a like an urn of some kind? It looks kind of futuristic, dude. I don't I don't know what to make of this because he's not an animal. What do I? I could call this guy anything. I could call him like Mister Richards or something. You know, like. Uh. I guess, but take go with your gut, but also like take the most prominent things that you see and and use that. Okay. Checkerboard swirls. He wears coats. Like in the last picture, he kind of looks like a mad scientist. But he's out he's outside and there's like an urn thing. What is that? Um, I don't know what to make of this dude. Uh, swirly. What is he doing? He stares. He likes to. He likes to look at you and smile. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> he sure does. So he's like the, the gazer beam. Uh, who is this guy? I don't. Giving you 10 more seconds. Bro, I have no idea, bro. Okay, this guy's name is... Uh, 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 I'm just going to call him the Mr... Mr... Mr. Soul Stealer. You're really, you're really cranking the gears on this one. Oh, man. I think you're thinking way too hard about it. Well, what do you mean? I'm. Uh, I, I don't. Is is he an obvious cryptid? Um, that I'm just missing here, dude. I have no what idea. Is, what is he doing in all three pictures? He's looking. Uh, the looker. Let's call him the looker. <laughs> 
I mean, he evidently is quite creepy, but like the looker just makes him sound juvenile. Is he like not? Delinquent. Oh, okay. Let's call him the the stare. I'm gonna call him the stare. Okay. The stare. I, what do you, What do you want from me? I'm gonna call him the stare. And uh, he's, I'm loving this. I'm loving this. He's uh he's not real. Okay. I don't know uh, what to think of this guy. Hoax. Okay. So his name is commonly referred to as the smiling man. Oh my gosh. Gosh dang. <laughs> tried so hard to get the look to the, the look so hard. <laughs> Oh, well, All you were he, focusing on was his eyes, which is fair because he's, he's like staring. He's always smiling, but his eyes are what I could not like stop looking at. Like his eyes were just like burning into my soul, especially in that one with the swirls, dude. That one's that's yeah, that, that one's pretty, creepy. pretty so, creepy. So how does this guy isn't actually a cryptid though? He is. There's no way. This is this is a cryptid. He's not an animal though. What? Humans are animals. So that means Slenderman would be a cryptid. No, because no one's ever actually claimed Slenderman was made for a game. It was never considered to be an actual creature. Mm, okay. I, I see what you're saying. Um, so there, there are actual sightings of this guy of like him being some sort of of mystical creature so his okay. his character is his character his name is indrid hold also known as the smiling man indrid hold, um, like he has i'll go into this name. really quick yeah he, he has a name i'll just read these sightings to you because this is really interesting uh this episode's a lot of reading but uh, this is incredibly interesting um yeah if yeah. you're cool with that yeah no go for it okay there's three sightings so here's the first one Injured Cold was first seen on October 16th, 1966, when two boys, Martin Mouse Munov and James Jimmy Yanchidis in New Jersey, were walking on 4th Street when they saw a surreal figure standing near a fence. As they walked closer, they figured it was a tall, bald man wearing a metal green suit who was staring right at them with a huge grin. The idiosyncratic man faced them until they got away from him. UFO, sighting, UFO sightings were also reported in the area. What? What? I, okay, I'm starting to see where this is going. According to Nightmind, the boys only recalled the more frightening de details as of their encounter later on. They would recall that the man in the green suit was unusually tall and had unnatural facial features, such as the lack of ears and a nose. Even though the most sources mention the New Jersey sighting, Injured Cold and the Grinning Man could completely... Oh, yeah. So here you go. There's that's the first sighting. Yeah, Second okay. sighting. Um, just a couple months later. So that was October. And then in November, in Parkersburg, West Virginia, around the same area as and time as the Mothman came about. Oh my gosh, dude. We're Drew Derenberger. Okay. Not a West Virginia yes. guys. It's, <laughs> it's a not crazy safe. place, man. It's not safe there. So Woodrow Derenberger was driving. Oh, yeah, I remember. I was reading this one, and this one's like crazy. Woodrow Derenberger was driving his way home on Interstate 77 until he heard a crash. Then an unidentifiable vehicle appeared to land in front of his truck. He described it as an old fashioned kerosene lamp chimney, glaring at both ends, narrowing down to a small neck and then enlarging to a great bulge in the center. Okay. The grinning man came out of the vehicle with a dark tan and walked up to Derenberger and telepathically said his name was Indrid Cold, and he meant no harm. Cold just said he wanted to know more about the human race and would like to visit Derenberger again. After the encounter, Derenberger stayed, stated that Cold revealed he was from the planet Lunalos in the galaxy of Ganymedes. Oh, I mean, technically, this guy isn't a human. I mean, I guess that that checks out. Uh, and then and the third sighting during the same period in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the Lily family had been reporting a poltergeist activity in their home, such as diamond-shaped lights. The Lily's daughter, Linda, 
Her name is Linda Lily. That's actually kind of cool. I was sleeping one night and awoke to see a man standing over her. It was a man, a big man, very broad. I couldn't see his face very well, but I could see that he was grinning at me. He walked around the bed and stood right over me. I screamed again and hid under the covers. When I looked again, he was gone. Oh my gosh. Dude. Wait, wait. So that was second sighting? That was the third sighting. That was the third sighting. Second sighting was when he got out of his ship. Um, mm hmm Bro, that's sick. Like, it's, it's also terrifying, but, like, it's... Uh, this guy definitely has the most, like, presence. I don't know, out of all of them. He just feels... He feels like an actual character in, like, a show or something. Like, he definitely has the most interesting story, I would say. Right? Where it's the grinning guy who seems very ominous, who apparently is from space and has his own ship and apparently apparently he means no harm but from all of the because you know yes it's creepy for a smiling man to act the way he does around like that that woman and the kids and sh showing up at people's houses and all that stuff like that that's creepy but it's also like if let's say it was real um it's not like he knows any better like maybe the way we do things is completely different from the way he does things um on his planet yeah so. seriously a aliens are yeah i think the culture of an alien would be so just, hard yeah i think aliens in general are just very unsettling because of the idea that they are so different like to a point where it could be dangerous it could be um like we, we just don't know right like uh cultures and species um don't always mix the best i feel like so uh, I mean, there's some things yeah. on Earth, right? Like, there's some things in the ocean, some some creatures that exist on the planet already that are confirmed to be real that are also kind of creepy, encrypted-like. So, um, but yeah, that that is crazy because it's like an actual dude. Um, so that that the, I I like the idea. Like, this is definitely one of the coolest and most creepy ones that we've talked about today. Yeah, um, when I when I uncovered this one, I thought it was definitely the freakiest one of yeah. all of them yeah because like he's always smiling too and it's like but why you know um yeah yeah but any, so uh, this he one is and he speaks english wait okay that's the weirdest part that he speaks english okay <laughs> well it, he spoke to the one person that he spoke to um he, he said it was telepathically oh, so i don't know if that what? was like okay. translated through the that's mind that's wild bro but hey, but I won. I won, I won the game. <laughs> so uh, this one, I it is loosely considered a hoax, but it is not confirmed oh, whether or not nuts. it's a hoax or not. So I will give you a half point for that one. No, but that's five point um, five. That's not enough. That's five point five points. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what here. In my mind, Man Eater is such a good name. I just <laughs> love the Man Eater so much. I'm upgrading that to a full point. Yeah, and let's giving go. you the, the W. Okay, Man All Eater right. takes the win. Well, I will take it. You know, I it was always destined to happen. I was always going to win because I'm the best. Are you giving what <laughs> the equivalent of a speech for winners? <laughs> I'm just being uh, overconfident. Uh, I, I was surprised that I, because I was thinking I wasn't going to get any of these, but I am happy that I at least knew who Mothman was. Um, yeah. So that was good. But yeah, Dude, cryptids I'm... are interesting. Because um, they're like based off real stories? Question mark, you know? Like, it's different than like coming up with something, right? It's like basing it off of an experience. That somebody else has had um, yeah like there's, there's always some kernel of potential truth to it which is honestly what makes it so freaky is that we just don't know i think that's where cryptids get into a territory of just like yes we just don't know and, and the more that we don't know the freakier it gets in our mind well and here, here's the craziest part right is that you know we're here on story dive we talk about stories cryptids only exist because someone told their story about it, right? Like 
they it come into existence mm. through storytelling. That's the only reason why cryptids exist in the first place is like, you know, ghost stories, you know, campfire stories. Um, that's kind of like how these urban legends and myths happen, you know? So all the cryptids that that's we discussed true. today were, were stories, right? I mean, maybe not the, the weird fish thing, but all the rest of them. Um, weird fish thing. Yeah. So, um, well, uh, I hope we've learned more as we, as I've gathered into this. I've kind of, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I don't know how you would invent your own cryptid. Well, but I feel like don't. we kind of did with the, the grants. The thing is, you don't invent cryptids. Like, I guess you, you could for like a, a video game or something. But the real cryptids that stick around are the ones that are based off of an experience where you don't know if it was real or not right like because we're human. yeah seriously we, we can hallucinate we can have dreams that feel very real people can you know experience things where they're unsure what happened and through that you know and through that game of telephone and maybe your memory isn't quite right or whatever um like these stories kind of exist but it's off of a very real thing that someone experienced um Cause like, I I'll tell you right now, I've had stories where something creepy happened to me. Um, and I'm not sure, like, I, I don't know a hundred percent if the thing I saw was real or not. Like there, I, I have a few, uh, stories that maybe I could share later. Uh, like maybe, maybe, uh, the next time I share my story of the week, you'll have to remind me, but I have a story that can kind uh, hey, of, my, of okay. my, own, my own cryptid story, I guess. Um, wow! Oh, that's wait, kinda... wait, 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 wait! You asked me to come up with a cryptid. I never, I never shared it. I did. Let's hear it, man. Okay. Let's round this all out. Let's. I'm Logan's going to present his his uh, cryptid, okay. and then I, I see our stop coming up. So, th so this is this is my cryptid that I came up with. His name is, uh, and you got to use your imagination here. Um, his name is Worst. So it's W R S H apostrophe D. Um, worst. He is a so imagine a small octopus like creature with demon eyes. Um, and he has giant tendrils coming out of the top of his head, um, that can extend oh. out very long, like within probably like 10 feet or so. And he hides, so he he hides in people's washers. Um, and so okay, yeah, so he would. If you ever leave your clothes in the washer for too long and they smell weird, it's because he's been there. Um, and like, oh, if there's ever any, it like, smells like the worst. Yes. And if there's ever any, uh, like, black mold around the washer or in the laundry room, that means that those are signs that he's been there before. And if you see little, like, like pills on your clothes, uh, those are like, like him, like, laying his eggs on your clothes and you have to, like, get those off. Um, he lays but, eggs. Is this a rooster? But if you situation? if you if you leave your clothes <laughs> if you leave your clothes in the washer for too long, then he will next time you go to the washer, he'll like grab you and pull you in with his tendrils um and feed off of you. Dang. It almost as like a punishment for like making his home unlivable. You know, he gets very ag agitated. But um This you know, sounds very much like a like a monster under your bed or in your closet kind of situation. It's like <laughs> right. a bedtime story you tell as a kid so that they do their laundry. <laughs> right. I well, you know, I didn't know the line between SCP and cryptid. Um, so I just came up with some kind of I wanted to be original too, because I'm like, people have come up with all sorts of stuff. So uh yes, he's very Did real. Someone swung a and pants he, from melons and he, and hi he hides and Yeah. Yeah, but he, he hides in your washer, guys. So make sure you don't forget to wash your. You clothes. better watch out. You better do your laundry. <laughs> you better do it quick, or your clothes will smell like the worst. Yeah, they'll smell like the worst, and it'll be the worst. It'll be the worst. <laughs> ah, well, thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining us on this train ride. What a ride! Uh, kind of a creepy ride. Um, yeah, dude. If you were creeped fun, out, fun nonetheless. If you were creeped out, then like. And subscribe and tell your friends to like, watch. subscribe, tell your friends to watch everything on YouTube. 
Starting and hey, Jer, if you have a cryptid experience, if you have, heaven forbid, a uh, uh, Bigfoot experience, um, <laughs> share it. Dude, share it in the comments. I'm actually kind of intrigued because yes. I, I know a lot of people and even have like family members that have claimed to see Bigfoot and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm familiar with a lot of the that stuff. But it'd be interesting to see what people have. Yes, please share your cryptid stories and I'll share mine in the future. Until then, stay tuned, stay trained. story died. I think I, there's a smiling man in the back. Uh, you see him? No, no, there's not. Don't, don't do that. Oh, no, sir. He's coming. Please. He's coming closer. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs>